is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today I have a very exciting episode for you. We're here actually late night after my busy work day to film another episode for you guys. And this is going to be a very important one. A lot of times, like we had in the last video, I get people asking, Hey John, what's a crop I could grow indoors in the wintertime and have enough to eat? You know, like a salad's worth of food, of my own food, that I can grow every day, that I can eat and harvest sustainably in the winter time or even indoors so I mean it's nighttime right now and there's a lot of growing on in the place behind me we're here in Riviera Beach Florida at got sprouts and got sprouts ships fresh sprouts to you but they also sell the paraphernalia you will need to grow your own fresh sprouts at home next we're gonna go inside got sprouts and we're gonna show you how they're growing sprouts inside a big warehouse building but more importantly, we're going to show you how to grow different sprouts, such as broccoli sprouts, alfalfa sprouts, clover sprouts, and little sprouters. But also, we're going to show you how to grow the most powerful green sprouts. Now, the green sprouts are the sprouts that are grown in soil. Some people may call them microgreens. Today, we're going to show you sunflower greens, which is actually very simple and very easy. You can source the seeds actually at the local Walmart and maybe we'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, we're gonna show you how you can grow one pound of salad greens or sunflower sprouts that you can harvest each and every day on a cycle. So every day you'll have a pound of sprouts and have a delicious sprout salad to fill in in the winter time when you're not able to grow outside. So uh, let's head into Got Sprouts and learn about growing some sprouts. Now we're inside Got Sprouts, and this is a little storefront area. I mean, the magic happens in the back where everything is growing, but this is where customers could come in to learn more about buying the sprouts, juicing the sprouts, and even try the sprouts. But more importantly, buy the seeds, the sprouting supplies, so that you can grow your own sprouts at home. Of course, if you don't want to grow your own, Got Sprouts sells to stores, the farmers markets, and will even sell direct to you through uh, air shipping so that's pretty amazing but what we're gonna do today is actually we're gonna get a behind the, the scenes tour to show you guys how they are growing inside this warehouse building and then maybe after that we're gonna show you how you guys could grow your own sprouts at home so uh, let's head on back to the warehouse and check it out now we're in the got sprouts literally the warehouse where they have actually I think nice full-spectrum lighting but just ambient light there's no lights directly on top of the sprouts and what we're going to do now is actually I'm going to pick up the camera and follow Sean around who is the master sprout grower here and uh, he's been doing it for six years and he's going to take us around and show some of the different sprouts he's growing how he's doing it and in just a little bit he's going to show you how you can grow sprouts too. So John the first thing we have to when you're coming through here is the buckwheat. We've got lots of buckwheat lettuce going on. This is probably about three or four days old right now and uh, when this thing is done, it's going to be about six or seven pounds of sprouts in one little tray here. I think probably weighs about 30, 40 pounds right now. So if I fall down during this interview, we know why. <laughs> <laughs> I love buckwheat sprouts. Definitely really good. Or actually buckwheat lettuce. These it's are so lettuce. tender. Is that why they're called lettuce? Because, I mean, yes. unlike uh, sunflower greens, these guys are nice and thin like lettuce yep. would be, right? Correct. Yep. And they have these little holes on them too, so you might want to take them, put them in a bucket of water, spin them around so the holes pop off them, and then pull them right out, and you already got them cleaned and ready to go. Great, what are we going to look at next? Okay, let's move over to the pea sprouts over here. These are our baby pea sprouts. These are green peas, and they're grown with a speckled pea seed. And you can actually, when you scroll in there a little bit closer there, you can actually see this, how large these seeds actually are. And they take about uh, five to seven days to actually get to be about this tall. We usually harvest them at this point. It's kind of in the middle of being used for juicing. So most people that buy them usually get to juice are probably about five or six inches tall to seven or eight inches, depending on how far you want to go. So these are the baby, baby sprouts here for the pea sprouts. And we cut them pretty short there for you. And they're going to be very tender at this stage. As they get older, they're going to be more fibrous and they're going to be more for juicing. At this point, you can use them for salads. You can put them in sandwiches. You can do a lot of different things with them that's, that's really tasty and they're really, really good for you. So, Sean, do you know what kind of pea sprouts these are? Like, what kind of, are they shell peas, like sugar snap it's, peas? I mean, what? It's actually called speckled pea. Is actually the, the, the brand of seed that you can use for this. And it's really good. Just 
it's, they call it the peat actually the complete food. You can actually, if you're stranded on a desert island, you can live off these things. That's how much vitamins are in this. Very good for you for protein, very good for uh, amino acid profile. It's got everything you want in it. Let's move on over to the sunflower. We've got quite a few of them over this area here. So what are we looking at here? Hey John, this is about uh, two to three days old at this point, and this is when the tray is actually being pushed up. And we usually put a lot of weight on this, but this tray is uh, going to be used to be flipped over at this point. So you can see how it's still yellow. It hasn't been greened up at this point. It's pushed up the tray, and that means it's telling you, go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to leave this on top, and it's going to continue to grow. It's going to keep the sprouts still moist, and it's going to continue to grow at that point. When this pushes up to where it pop here, where you can actually see the sprouts again, that's when you want to take it out and start greening it up. And this is the day after. It's amazing. They'll grow three to four inches in one day. And once again, you shouldn't put direct light overhead, just, you know, as long as there's ambient light in the room like there is here on your walls and yeah. up on your uh, ceiling there, it's yeah. going to be fine, right? Yeah, you're looking for indirect light. Any room that you can see yourself in is enough light. Now, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm getting wind blown in here. Is there a sure. reason for all the fans and all the air sure. circulation? Yeah, you want to keep the air circulating all the time. I try to keep it, uh, you're probably looking between 70, 75 degrees in here. And you want to keep the airflow going to, to stop any mold or any, any, any mold coming out. So if somebody's growing at home, do they need all the fans or should they blow some fans on the wheat, on the, on the sprouts and the trays or what? Sure. Um, depending on what temperature you're growing in, if you're growing in over 80 degrees, you have to put a fan on it because it's too hot at that point. And you got to figure the seeds are coming from the upper Midwest, so you're looking at like Nebraska and Oregon areas and things like that. So it's used to cold weather. It does well in cold. So when you get to 70, 80 degrees, once you're over 80 degrees, you're going to start walk, working looking at mold. So if they're below 80 degrees, 75 degrees, you'd say they don't need a fan? No, not necessarily. All but right. if you grow on a large scale, you're going to have a lot of humidity, so that's why we have the fans going all the time. This is our baby sunflowers. This thing weighs about 150 pounds. <laughs> so I may buckle any second now, but these, these babies are full of life and are ready to go. Great for salads. Um, we actually do a sun salad, which has sunflower, pea greens, and also sprouted, sprouted bean mix on top of it. You can take a little oil and vinegar, put it over the top of it, or just eat it the way it is. It's fantastic. We call that the sun salad. So how many uh, pounds of sprouts are on there? Like if you were to harvest that you flat? You probably get about four pounds out of this. All right, four pounds of sprouts. One tray, that's a lot of food for one tray. Next we're gonna move over to the wheatgrass. Wow, you guys have a lot of wheatgrass growing over here. What do you guys do with all that? Uh, we cut it, mow it, whatever you wanna do yeah. with it. But yeah, you can basically take this out. It's great for juicing. You wanna juice the wheatgrass. You don't wanna put it on salads. You don't wanna eat that straight out because you're not gonna be able to digest it. Someday we'll be a cow, we can do that. Um, this is the wheatgrass. This is about uh, probably about two or three days before it's ready to harvest at this point. You want to harvest it at what they call the jointing stage. That's when the second leaf starts to come up. We usually harvest it just about the day before the jointing stage. And I usually tell it by the site, if you can see some of the wheatgrass, they'll start to get a little hairy where they'll start spreading out on the sides. And that's when you want to harvest the entire tray at that point. So you take that, juice it up. It's extremely good for it. Oxygenation purifies the blood. And it's, uh, it's just a natural blood cleanser baby wheatgrass. So how old is uh, this stage here? It's about three days. You want to talk uh, talk to us about the root zone and sure. how that works and sure. what the soil does and if it absorbs all the nutrients in the soil or if that's mold in the soil or what's going on here? Yeah, if you take a look at the, the actual soil here, the, you see the white uh, kind of a cobweb effect you have there? That's actually the root system of the wheatgrass. And start getting it. This is actually the sugars of the plant as you get down here. In about uh, four or five days, there will be no soil left. All the nutrients will be in the plant, and it's all going to eat that soil right up. So here we're looking at about five to six days here. And if I lift this up, you can see there's very little soil left. It's just eating the soil away. And by the time it's, it's ready to harvest, there won't be any soil left. So you don't want to regrow this once you do it. Just throw the pad out and start over again. Go ahead and plant again. So yeah, should, they should compost their pads out and then right. use that soil in their garden. Sure, absolutely. And how much will one flat of this stuff make in juice, like if you're going to sure. juice that? Sure, if you're doing a, a whole tray like this, you're going to get two pounds of sprouts of, of wheatgrass in there. And two pounds, we'll just figure a pound will give you 10 to 12 ounces normally of juice. So if you got two pounds, you're going to be 20 to 24 ounces of juice for you. So, so that, that right there is going to produce? This will last you probably two weeks if you're doing two ounces a day. Wow, that's... 24 ounces of juice right there. That's a lot of juice. A lot of juice to be carrying around. So this is just about the fully grown one here. And what you want to do is you want to look for the what they call the jointing stage. I'll show you how that works. 
Jointing stage is really where the second leaf is starting to come off. Sorry my hands are dirty. Bear with me. If you can see that second leaf just about to sprout right there. See that? It's right there. You can see it's kind of like coming off. Yeah. See how that comes out like that? Yeah. And it's just to kind of show you an easier view. It looks something like this. Once that second leaf starts coming out, you want to go ahead and cut the entire tray there. That's a top of the nutri nutritional value for wheatgrass. You let it go the next day, it ages like 40 years. It'll start drooping like this. <laughs> so is that tray ready to be harvested this like tomorrow? To harvest. Yep, tomorrow morning it'll be ready to go. And then once you guys harvest it, how do you guys uh, store it if you, after that? You can store it in Debbie Meyer green bags. It will last about seven to 10 days in the refrigerator, so you can use it up through that. You're gonna go through it in about five or six days, so that it'll never get to the where, it, where it goes bad. On. It does continue to grow in the refrigerator, even though it slows the growth. Even after it's cut? Even after it's cut. Wow. Yep. It's a very resilient plant. So what if I wanted to grow a lawn of a wheatgrass there, Sean? Could I get a lot of wheat seed and just grow this as a lawn and keep mowing it and what? will it keep coming back? Why not? <laughs> I actually met a guy who actually took a, he took a jersey, a football jersey, soaked it in water and soaked the seed and planted the seed on top of the jersey, walked around with it, and actually it was growing wheatgrass out of his jersey. It's amazing stuff you can do with this. <laughs> Great for Halloween whenever you want to have a good party. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed that behind the scenes tour that Sean just gave us. As you can see behind me, the sunflower greens are on this metal rack, but they also have a lot of PVC racks that are just grown basically on a PVC uh, tubing that they put together to make racks, which is very inexpensive. So you could do that at home or you could buy a metal rack like this. But there's no point in uh, building a rack unless you're gonna know how to grow the sprouts. So next we're gonna go into the store area and you're gonna learn how to grow sprouts in water and also the very sunflower greens you're seeing behind me so that you can grow them every single day of the winter time so you can produce a nice large salad that you can eat. Now we're inside Got Sprouts with Sean, the owner and master grower here. He's the master sprout man. I'm your grass man. <laughs> he's the grass man. <laughs> and he's been growing commercially on this commercial scale for six years. And that's a long time. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to learn from the expert that's been doing this. I mean, this is his livelihood. And if you're doing it as your livelihood, you're gonna optimize and do the best you can. And he definitely has some beautiful sprouts here. So what Sean's going to do today is he's going to introduce you to some of the different sprouts, the two different ways you can grow sprouts in soil or in water, and a few things he likes to do that with. Uh, the primary thing that I want to show you guys that is really the most sustainable for sprouts, in my opinion, are the green sprouts. They contain the chlorophyll, and they're basically like little miniature plants. I mean, in fact, they're being called microgreens now. So uh, Sean, why don't you take over and tell us about this easy sprout and tell us about some of the beans and some of the smaller seeds that you can sprout in water. Sure, John. Um, just kind of keeping it simple for people. So they're, they're trying to, you're trying to do a home garden, basically. So you're, you're, you're trying to figure out different ways you want to grow in your, in your kitchen. So we kind of set up a little kitchen area here. We're going to kind of show you a couple different ways that we can do this. Um, first of all, it depends on the seed that you're going to be growing and how you're going to be sprouting. You can sprout in soil, you can also sprout in water using this easy sprouter. You can use mason jars, you can use nut bags. There's a lot of different ways to sprout. But if you want to keep it simple, this is one of the simplest ways I think I've, I've ever recommended people try. The first thing I'm going to show you is actually how to grow the bean sprouts. And the bean sprouts are probably the easiest one to sprout at home. So we're, we put together this little uh, mixture of bean sprouts here. I don't know if you can see that real close or not. But uh, it's got adzuki, mung beans, garbanzos, red lentils, and green lentils in there. You mix them up, you can make hummus out of it, you can do a lot of different things with a bean mix. But the first thing we want to do is sprout it, obviously. And we're going to be using the easy sprouter to go ahead and do the bean mix here. So first thing we're going to do is the first part of it here is it's just basic empty little bucket part of it. And um, it has a slotted bucket on the inside of it. I don't know if you can see that from the far up here, but we're going to pull this back. And you're going to drop this inside. You're going to take some of the bean mix. I'm going to take it out of the package here. So tell us uh, about you know the different mixes you guys have. Like, can somebody go down to their health food store and sprout those, or should they buy it from you know you guys because you guys have the special ones, right? Yeah, we do have some fantastic seed. Um, and whatever you're sprouting, you're looking for the best viable seeds you can get. And um, we, we actually sell the same seeds that Apocrys Health Institute uses, so we know it's really good. They use it for their health facility, they've used it for 50 years. So we use the same farms that they use. 
So that's the reason why we have the most viable seed in the business. So if you want to get a bean mix, there's lots of different mixes you can get. You can go with the hairy sprouts, which I call broccoli, alfalfa, clover, radish, and things like that, grown the same way. Um, bean sprouts, I like to start with people when they're just getting ready to do it because it's the simplest ones to do. Very simple, you're going to pour a little bit in. You're going to get one to two out of this. So whatever one you put in there, you're going to get twice as much. When you go with broccoli, when you go to clover, radish, you put one teaspoon in there, you're going to get five times as oh, much. Oh, wow. So they really so expand. Yeah, they really do. And the cool thing, I mean, why do you sprout? Why do you eat sprouts? It's the most nutritious food on the planet. When you have these little seeds here, and you can see the seeds, they have a certain amount of energy in them. But when you actually sprout them, it's six times as much energy. So it's like a two-year-old. I always tell people it's like a two-year-old. You ever chase a two-year-old around? Yeah. Running all over the place. My brother's God, kid is actually two years old. God, I wish I had the energy, right? Is that the first thing you said? No, I, I outrun him. Do you? Yeah, good man. So he's eating his sprouts. I love this guy. I eat a lot of greens and my sprouts, too. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's the same thing. I have a little two-year-old who runs around all day long. Yeah, right. God, I wish I could catch this kid. Well, that's what these are. This is, this is, this is pure energy. That was what you're consuming. So you want to take a little bit of this. You want to pour some in there. And if you want to be specific, again, you're going to get one to two. So it depends on how many people you have in the family. Maybe you want to do half of it. Maybe you want to do a quarter of it, depending on how many people you want. Like how much could you sprout? Do you sprout like the whole thing full or just half full? You probably want to do half. You need to have some air space, right? Yeah, because you're going to, if you do half of oh, it, it's going to expand the whole way through. So, so I usually do about this much, which is about a quarter full. And um, you're going to get twice as much, so you're going to be just about three quarters of the way full by the time you're done there. So, so again, you just pour it in the bottom there. You're going to soak this with water. We have some water back here. We just fill it up. So now you're just filling it up. And once again, sprouts. Anybody can do this in your kitchen, whether you've got the easy sprouter or you use a mason jar with you know a lid, a screw-on lid with a mesh on it. Uh, they do offer these tools at their website, which we'll mention at the end. Okay, so we're soaking this. You're going to soak this overnight. Right before you go to bed, put your seeds in, soak it overnight, go to sleep. You wake up, and the first thing you do in the morning is you're going to take this over to the sink, and you're going to lift it up. And you see how the water's coming out the bottom? It's got this slotted bottom there for you, so it keeps it simple. You're going to shake it out really good, pour the water out, and you've got your seeds all set up in there. So here you go, you got your seeds on the bottom. You soaked them all night. And then you want to take it and you want to put it in top into the Easy Sprouter. And it's got a little ledge there that you can set it up like this. And I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you real close. It sits up on the ledge here. And what that does is it creates confection where air gets underneath the seeds and gets through the seeds. And the heat of it actually expanding and sprouting will actually help it sprout even quicker. So within about, say, another six to eight hours, you're going to start getting little tails off of all these little bean sprouts. And then you just drop it in. Put the vented top on top, put it right in the fridge, and you've got yourself a little meal ready to go. Pull it wow. out anytime you want to, put it on salads, put it in soups, anything you want to add a crunch to. Sandwiches, however you want to do it. Just pull that out, take a little bit out, put it on your sandwiches, put it on your soups, salads, whatever you want to do. And that was like one day, right? Like it's, it's basically two, two, well, you're going to go to bed at night, so it's about 12 hours, so you're soaking it. You wake up in the morning, drain it out. You're going to rinse it once probably during the day. That night, you can put it in the fridge. Wow. So it's probably about, let's say, about 24 to 30 hours or so. Oh, I see. So yeah. one to one and a half days. You can be growing your own sprouts. Everybody could do one of this in their kitchen real easy. I think one of the most important things about the system that I like is the airflow. Now tell us if something doesn't have enough airflow, what's going to happen? You're uh, going to get your Sean? mold. You're going to get your mold. You're going to get your, the bad smelling. So you, you're not going to want to try it. <laughs> so how can you tell if your sprouts are bad? Will you just smell it if it... Yep. If it smells all right, then it's probably good. If it smells nasty, don't even chance it, right? Yeah. I would say rinse it out real good. If you have any smell to it, then you might want to just take it and throw it out and start over again. It's, Actually, it's even better, so throw them outside to see if they'll grow into a plant. Like I've done that before. <laughs> throw them on your compost and see if they'll, you have a garbanzo bean plant or something. Actually, that happened to me. Yeah, <laughs> garbanzo plant. Yeah, I did. Actually, I grew them in a little pot. There you go. Yeah, because like, oh, I'm not going to eat these, but let's see if they grow. Let's see, it's future hummus of the world plant. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, so how do these other things go? I mean, I see you got like the radish sprouts or radish, radish seeds, seeds here, yeah. broccoli seeds. I mean, there's all kinds of different seeds you can grow. Yeah. Uh, mung beans. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the sunflower, which is going to be for later. Yeah. The clover, alfalfa. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to tell you guys, if you buy these seeds, you could buy them here and say you just want to grow like a clover. Clover is a great cover crop. It's also edible as a sprout or even when it gets taller, we could eat it. 
you could buy your seeds from like a sprout house like this and just grow these in your garden. And it, actually buying broccoli for sprouting is a lot cheaper than buying just a small pack of broccoli seed. But then you'll never know exactly what kind of broccoli you're gonna get. Also they have the oh, whole buckwheat here and this is actually used for sprouting uh, in this style but not growing for the greens. Mm -hmm. So the next thing you can do, John, if you want to get into the broccoli, the clover, the alfalfa, uh, radishes, these seeds actually get one to five. So what you can do is you take a teaspoon, just pour a little bit on there, dip it in there. You're going to get five times as much when you're done with that. What we recommend is you go to, go to bed, obviously you soak it overnight, wake up in the morning, you rinse it out really good. You're going to rinse that probably twice a day for about two days. And then you're going to start to see the sprouting coming up. And it's really, I wish I had some shot here for you to take a look at it, but you'll see the actual root system coming out the bottom here, and they'll get as tall as this. And if you want to kind of green them up, you can put them next to the window and stuff, they'll green right up really good. Rinse them out really good every day. And then say if you have your clover or your, um, your alfalfa, it has these little, little seeds on top of it. So what you want to do is if you have a salad spinner, you can take that, put it in some bowl of water, pour it in the salad spinner, spin it real, around real good, and then you can wipe out the inside. We'll get all the holes out of it. Mm. And then it's good to go. You put it right back into the sprouter, put the top on, put it right back in the fridge, pull it out whenever you need it. And what's the total time elapsed on those guys? Probably about two days. Wow, so two days to have your own broccoli sprouts sure. in your kitchen. Or you could buy them in a little two ounce package for I don't even know, three or four dollars. Yeah. yeah, you'll so save a lot of money. You're going to save a lot of money just like growing a garden. You're going to actually price even, save even more money and by the, growing your own sprouts, and actually. The taste. The taste, oh, the taste, taste is, is so phenomenal. Oh my gosh. Especially if you go organic seeds as opposed to commercially grown seeds. Right. The seeds, I mean, the, the flavor of the radish, it spikes. It's amazing. It's, there's another thing, too. You can take the alfalfa, the clover, and the broccoli. Experiment. Try some of the Oh, mix them, right? Yeah, mix, mix them. them. Wow. Mix. Yeah. Throw some radish in there. You're going to love the flavors. Now try arugula. Arugula just by itself. Oh, I love arugula. It's yeah. very, very great. I mean, it's, it's a peppery, light flavor. It's just amazing. So there's lots of different things you can do. Experiment, have some fun with it. Wow, so yeah, I mean within one day, maybe two, you could have your own sprouts ready to eat, grown in your kitchen that you grew with your very own hands. So another question people might have is, hey, how do you use the sprouts? I know, I mean, I would personally just eat all the sprouts in a big salad and put some salad dressing on or make a salad dressing, maybe add it to my lettuce if I have lettuce, or just eat a whole sprout salad of different kinds of sprouts. I mean. It's probably one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. It is. What are some other ways that uh, people can use their sprouts there, Sean? You can, you can put them in, sa uh, obviously, salads is what most people use them for. Right. But take them in wrap sandwiches. I put okay. them on top of any time. I, I put them in my soup. I take the oh, wow. crunchy bean mix. I'll put them in the soup to get some little crunchy to it. That's good, yeah. You can make hummus with it. You can make a lot of pâtés with it. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. The other thing I'll do is I'll actually uh, get some nori. I'll put the nori sheet, and then I'll put a bunch of sprouts in there, just cut up some avocado and some dulse. And just roll that up into a nice little wrap. Okay, it's real easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm hungry, so I didn't eat dinner yet either. So. <laughs> so you just learned how to grow the sprouts in the water, such as all the sprouts you just saw. Now that's absolutely the easiest way, because you don't need any dirt, you don't need any anything. You just need like a little sprouting appliance, such as this one, or even a mason jar or something. Or I've even used colanders when I'm on vacation and from the condo, you know, that I'm living in actually the buckwheat. I like to sprout the the whole buckwheat in just a colander, you know, because the seeds are so big they won't actually go through the colander. It's just very simple. But so this is the easiest way to sprout, bar none, but even better in my opinion than sprouting in water is actually growing the greens, because once again, my show is called Growing Your Greens, and greens, whether they're buckwheat greens, sunflower greens, wheatgrass, or, uh, you know, pea greens, they're also greens. They're baby plants. Also, people are calling them microgreens. You could do like arugula like this and other radishes and other crops, you know, grow them into greens. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to grow in trays. And this is the way you could do it so that you can have food and like literally a pound of food every day throughout the winter time if you can't grow outside in the winter. Uh, and in the trays and in the basically in the soil we're going to grow in, uh, you could grow a few things such as the pea uh, greens, you could grow wheatgrass, if you're going to juice it I don't necessarily recommend making a salad out of wheatgrass unless you're a cow. <laughs> um, the buckwheat, so you could grow buckwheat greens, but my favorite actually is the sunflower greens and that's what we're going to show you today. It's also the hardest from what Sean says. So 
Sean, why don't you take it away and show us how the experts do it. Okay, thanks John. Well, uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to decide to get the best organic seed you can possibly find and then you want to give us a call here at God Sprouts because we definitely have the best organic seed there is. It's the most viable seed and you can see why. Uh, this is what you get when, you, when you're finished. So we're going to start showing you how to do this. This is about four pounds are. of food right here, yeah. so you could do the large trays, but you should start off small and grow big. Yeah. <laughs> we grow commercially, so it's a little bit on a bigger scale, but we're going to start off really small. And this is kind of the setup that I tell people when they first come into God Sprouts and say, hey, I want to grow sunflower, I want to grow pea green, I want to grow wheatgrass or buckwheat or any of these, any of these soil-based um, sprouts. We're going to show you how to do it in a small little setup like this. First thing you want to do is you want to get a tray that has no holes in it. See, no holes. This is a 10 by 20 tray, and I call this the large tray. So you have this. Um, the reason why it has no holes in it is because you want to catch the water, and that's what it's for. And this is kind of a whole little sprout kit that I set up for you. Then you want to get one of the smaller trays, and this is a 10 by 10 tray. Nice little square. Fits perfectly right inside. Okay, see how that goes? It goes, fits right inside there. You can actually have two of these going at one time, so I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But just to get you started, this is going to grow you one pound of, of sunflower, one pound of wheatgrass, one pound of buckwheat. Um, it'll grow you a little bit less, so probably about a half pound of pea because the pea seeds are so large. So that's kind of what you're looking for to get out of this. And, and what you want to put into it, obviously, you want to start off with a good quality organic soil. So do you use like a potting mix or like uh, just a garden soil or what do you yeah. recommend? Um, well, we have, we have uh, Eco Magic soil here that we sell here. And it's a 40 pound bag for, for $10. It's pretty inexpensive. But you can get about 10 trays out of that. You're going to get 20 trays of this out of 40 pound bag. Um, Lambert's is a good medium if you're going to go to Home Depot, if you have a Home Depot near you. Or uh, Scott's brand, some, some, they, you're looking for an organic soil. Lambert's, the thing I like about Lambert's is a very light soil because they put about half peat moss in there. So it's going to be very easy to use. So, so should it be a potting or a garden soil? Because there's a big difference in yeah, like the mixtures. It's a garden soil. So a garden about. soil, not a potting mix. Right. And this stuff looks very dark and very rich. And that's the other thing, you know, you want to get a nice, dark, rich soil to use to grow in. So you're going to put about two inches of dirt in here. And just to kind of show you what that looks like. It's about two inches here. And we're going to take that and we're going to kind of spread your hand over the top of it just to kind of level it out for you. Then you're going to take the other tray that you have on top. You're going to push it down and make it nice and flat. Like so. So now we have our little rows to put our seeds in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the next thing, we're going to soak our seed overnight. The next morning we're going to wake up, we're going to rinse it out really good, and it's ready to plant at that point. You can leave it in the, inside the bucket for a while until it gets little sprouts on the bottom of it. And it'll be a little white sprout. And you, right now you can see a few of them that are sprouting. So you're going to take that. Sean, but before you sure. add that in there, how many, how, much, how many pounds do you soak in there that sure. you're going to be spreading sure. out? Sure. For the half, the half tray, you're going to use about a half a pound of seeds. So if you're using the wheatgrass, you're obviously a half a pound. The pea sprouts, you're going to use a half a pound. The sunflower, you're going to use about a little less than that because they're larger seeds. So you, I'd say about, about maybe a little bit over a quarter, a little less than a half pound. But a half pound was, is a good thing, good gauge to, to measure it by. So you want to take this, and you're going to sprinkle it back and forth. And the whole idea is you want to cover the entire amount of soil with this seed. And now, then, should they be touching each other or overlapping or, or what? You just want to find its own space. And as long, long as you're covering the seed or the, the soil, it'll be fine. So even if you have two on top of each other, they'll find their way. And I'll show you one that's completely done. This is what it looks like when it's done. You're completely covered here for it. Okay? So you cover the soil. You want to put it on there. Stick it right in there. The thing is with sunflower, sunflower likes pressure. So it, and I've been told that if you put a, if a tray on top of this and you stood on it, it will pick you up eventually. <laughs> That's how strong these sprouts are. You can stand in one place for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you have time, you know, so <laughs> Nothing better to jump, do. Jump right in. So again, you want to take another tray, put some soil on. This one's already done, so I'm going to use that. Put some soil, pack it down like we showed you earlier, and then take that and put it on top of the seeds like this. So you see how that's stacked on there? You want to water it real good first, so you want to keep the soil and the, and the seeds moist through the whole time. So now you have that on top, right? So you're all set. Go to bed, next morning you wake up, it's time to water again. 
So you want to lift this up, water it really good. Now when you water it, Sean, do you use like a little uh, spray bottle mister? Do you like a rain can to like water plants? Or I mean, what I do you use? I recommend a rain can. And the reason being, it's a lot, little more water, obviously. The, the spritzer is good once it starts getting a little taller, but you want to saturate that soil and you want to make sure it stays nice and moist. And that's see. the whole idea. You want to keep the, the seeds moist all the way through. Okay. Okay. So then you've got, uh, so the next morning you wake up, and every morning you're going to wake up and you're going to water this pretty good. Let the water drip out into this pan. You can pull this out if you want. If you keep it, I keep mine right next to my sink at home. I just dump it out, put this right back in. So I see you got this now, and we got uh, you know two trays on top. Can you grow two trays on top and put another one on top and just Absolutely. have a bunch growing? Absolutely. You got a family of four. You're gonna have to plant more. Obviously, <laughs> just keep stacking them on top of each other. Wow. You can go up three or four or five, however. And you feel. when do you take these weights off, or how does that work? What's next? Well, basically. In about two or three days, this is actually going to lift right up so we actually you can see the sprouts coming out from underneath. Once you see that, that's when you want to take the pressure off at that point. And then take an empty tray, cover it like this, and you're going to be at this stage right here. So what we have behind us is actually his commercial growing that he grows to sell. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's quite a bit of money to buy some sprouts, but if you can't grow them, I recommend you buy them instead of not eat them. And we're going to do a close-up now and show you guys, like, the different stages on how they should look like when you're growing them. And now this is actually the first day right here when you've actually sprouted your sprouts, your seeds, and you've planted them. You see the little white tails coming out from the bottom? Those are actually the sprouts, or they'll become the root system. And this is probably about two days right now. So you've planted them like this. You're going to see the seed right here like this. The next day, you're going to water them real good. The next day, they'll start looking like this. In about two to three days, you're going to start getting them like this. And we recommend that at this point, when it, this is actually where it lifts up the tray, and you can actually see the sprouts from underneath, at that point, you want to lift, take the tray and flip it over like this. And what that's doing is it's, it's still keeping the soil moist and the seeds moist, so it's still pushing up the sprouts at this point. When that lifts this tray up, that's when you want to take it off and start greening them up. You see how this is not green at this point. So this has just been uncovered this, this afternoon. Then you're going to go to the third to fourth day over here where you can see the sprouts starting to take shape. And you'll see the, some of them, the husks are starting to pop off here too. So that means they're starting to blossom up here and really, really starting to look nice and green. And how tall are they at this stage? You're looking at probably about two to three inches at this point. And here over here is a four to five days. And you're starting to see when they're starting to sprout right here. They're really starting to take off right now. And it's funny, while we're sitting here, I keep hearing all these husks falling off. So these guys are really starting to reach for the sky right now. <laughs> and then this is the finished product when you're done. You're looking at about six to seven days at this point. So that's about one week, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you know when they're ready? When they're ready, they're actually going to have a second uh, set of leaves that are going to start popping out from here. And it's really the center of the leaf that you'll start seeing the second start right there. Right in the middle there. See that? So once that's in, that's, that's the time to harvest. Because you can actually keep these in the refrigerator. Once you cut them, you can store them in a Debbie Myers green bag. You can put them in uh, Ziploc bags, put a poke of little holes in there because they do breathe. And they do give off gases, so you want to give them a little air to breathe through there. Um, once you cut them, put them in a Debbie Meyer green bag, put them in the refrigerator. It'll last you about seven to ten days. And of okay. course, you're going to be going through them a lot quicker than that, especially if you're juicing or if you're using it for salads and things like that. You'll go through a pound probably in two or three days. All right, Sean, so I have a few questions for you. So you're optimally supposed to harvest at this, especially in a, as a commercial grower, you're growing them for poundage. This is actually where they're going to weigh the most. But what if you want to harvest them at you know other stages? Can you harvest them right when they turn green sure when they're you younger? Sure you can. Say like, so for me, what I would do is I would actually start turning them when they're green. I'd probably wait till about this stage and I'd start clipping them. And then, you know, hopefully I'd use a lot of them. By the time they turn like this, I'd be almost done with the whole tray because in my opinion, I don't want to put my sprouts in the fridge so like, and, out and cut them. Because once you cut them, then at that point, the nutrition has been growing, going up because they're sprouting. But the cut points, you know, they, they te teeter out with the nutrition and then they start to go down. Now, of course, in a commercial business, you know, that's his money right there. So he wants to make sure that you get good product that you're gonna buy and they assure you do that. But I would I would encourage you to actually only cut it and then use it right after you cut it. Now, of course, you don't wanna get them 
uh, too old after they get to this point because then they start getting all kind of funky. So if they get to this point, you're not using them, just cut the rest and juice the rest really quick to get rid of them and make a nice, delicious green juice or something. <laughs> and keep it, on your, keep it on your dining room table. I have a little tray about this size. I keep it on my, my kitchen. And when I'm done, it's about like this. I just take a snip off. Every time I want to sail, I just come by, swipe it off, go through. And will it grow back? Yes, it will grow back. I wouldn't recommend taking the second, second growth because it's, it's basically going to be eating all the soil at that point. All the nutrients are pretty much gone in the second growth. So I would just keep it, cut it as you need it, take it off. So this will probably last you a day or two if you're going to use a salad or if you're juicing or something like that. You're going to wipe this out in a day. Yeah, actually, I like that idea of keeping it on your table, making it handy. I mean, maybe you're eating eggs in the morning. Hey, cut some off and put some in your eggs. I mean, maybe you're eating a sandwich. Put some off, put some in your sandwich. Maybe you're just, you know, at your kitchen table doing some work. Hey, grab some and start eating and just snacking on it like you were out in your garden. Yeah. And this is the winter time even. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you can do it any time of the season. As long as you've got natural light where you can see yourself in the room, that's enough light. They like indirect light. The sunflower, you might want to green up a little bit more than direct sunlight. But the wheatgrass, the pea, the buckwheat, they're all fine in any, any room that you can see yourself and there's enough light for that. So how much light, so say you're just growing it in a room, sure. it's nighttime now, yeah. uh, how much light should they have? Just like, if you put them next to a window, is that enough light for them? Yeah. In, the, in, a, in a sunny window? Absolutely. Like what's, the, what's the temperature it should be, uh, you know? Temperature, also... you want to keep it below 80 degrees for to keep away from mold, but uh, as far as coldness, you can go anywhere from, I'd say, 65, a little bit up to 70. They're going to grow very slow. So instead of seven days, you're looking at probably nine or 10 days. I see. So the so, cooler it is, so if, you, if you're if you cheap like me and don't heat your house up, <laughs> you're going to take a little more time. You're going to take a little more time. So you might, what you might want to do is, I don't know, stick your dehydrator in a room and have your sprouts grown in there so it's, you're dehydrating some stuff but also at the same time you're growing sprouts or maybe you want to put a heater in a room to just grow your sprouts so they grow faster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you keep them 70, 75, it's perfect temperature. Keep the humidity low, probably uh, 70, 75 as well. It'd be perfect temperature for them. So we just learned how to grow the sunflower greens. It's very simple and very easy but the problem is people only learn how to grow like one little small tray. What if somebody wants to grow like one tray's worth, which is about a pound of food every day so that they can be eating a salad throughout the whole week? Uh, you can basically set this up. This will grow you one pound. So by the time you're done with this, and what I usually do is I'll start one on Monday. Mm -hmm. I'll start another one on Friday or Thursday or Friday just to keep them going. So you can actually stagger them and do them as per day. If you're growing it in an ideal temperature, it's going to take you about five to seven days to grow it. So you figure at one every every other day, you're going to plant one. Or how about one? If you do one every day, is that going to get you? Sure. If the goal is to get one pound a day. Would you like just start oh, one yeah. whole? If you do one pound a day, if you do one pound, pound a day, then you'd start like one little tray a day. Yeah. So as you harvest one, you're also fill, fill, putting a new one back to grow it, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. And if you just did one a day, you'll have seven. Or maybe even eight, have an extra one just to have a little bit more. And if you got that down for a couple of days, then you go into business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was growing on my back patio for myself, and my friends go, hey, can I have some of that? And as soon as you bring this, and every time, any time I've ever gone to dinner, I've always done a takeout. Everybody goes, we want Sean to come. We want Sean to come. Because I always bring live food to it. So I always bring a live tray of sunflower, a live tray of pea greens or buckwheat. And everybody cuts it off and go, wow, how do you do this? So you're going to end up going like, okay, well, let me show you how to do it. Or just watch John. He'll tell you. Just, <laughs> you'll see us doing this. And uh, it, it's amazing how quickly it'll catch on. Yeah, so the main thing was just uh, start with one, get it going pretty good, then start the next one the next day as you harvest it. Then you're going to have seven. You're just going to harvest one, make a new one. And it's just going to be a rotating cycle. And you'll have all the different stages like we have here. So it's definitely going to be real easy and really good once you get it all set up and dialed in. So Sean, like another thing that people might ask is, they know that I'm into rock dust and remineralization of the soil. Um, uh, I see you have some ocean solution here, and I would recommend that you would put ocean solution, you know, in the water that you water these with. Uh, do you think that's a good idea or not? Absolutely. Why not? If you can get more nutrients out of anything, obviously put them in there. But by no means is this required. This is extra credit work. And in my opinion, it's going to make everything taste sweeter and just that much better. Yeah. More nutrients, a better taste. So thank you for showing us how to grow sprouts in water and now also in the trays and soil. You know, it's absolutely really simple and real easy. But what if somebody wants to learn more about how to grow, you know, a multitude of different ways? Sure.
that's that's a that's a that's a big concept. A lot of people come in all the time and say, "How am I going to do this? I, I I have limited space. I don't have places for trays and things like that. How am I going to grow my sprouts?" And you talk about winter time, you know, growing sprouts during the winter to be able to keep live food coming in all the time. This is there's no better way to do this. Um, we actually put together a video that you can actually see how to grow in nut bags, how to grow in mason jars, how to grow in, in the easy sprouter. Lots of different ways that we can do it. I actually worked with Linda Fries, who is a Pocrete Health Institute health educating director at one point, and she's actually got her own television show up in Canada, and she shows you a lot of different ways to sprout. And then I take you in the back of Got Sprouts and actually show you how to do the sunflower, the pea green, the buckwheat, and the wheatgrass. So it's a very simple and easy, understood video. It shows you a lot of different products you can use and different ways you can do it, but it's all gauged to keeping it simple. And that's the whole idea. Keep it simple and enjoy it. And enjoy your life. All right, Sean. So if somebody has questions about growing sprouts, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. Obviously, you, you have all the knowledge, like I have knowledge about growing outside. You know how to do inside gardening besides in the video. Are there any other resources like maybe that you guys have online that will answer people's questions yeah. before they need to contact you? Absolutely. Uh, we just did finish our video segment, and it's actually about 84 questions, I think, that frequently ask questions. And people call in all the time and say, what about this? What about this? What about this? Go to www.gotsprouts.com, and you'll actually see all of our YouTubes on the right-hand side. And it has an FAQ, and it's about a minute for each question. It'll kind of go over it, very concise. And I worked with uh, Michael Berganzi, who was a master grower at Apocrites there. And we did some, uh, did some really entertaining and, uh, and exciting videos for that. Okay, great, great. So if somebody wants to buy these different trays, the DVD, or even some of your seeds. Now, once again, I want to talk about the seeds for just a minute because seeds are so important. Like, you could be like, you know, I tried to sprout, but it's not growing. What's the problem? Well, you know, there's a lot of things, but one of the biggest problems, in my opinion, is the seeds. The seeds you're buying at the health food store are meant for eating and not necessarily sprouting. Although they may sprout, they may not grow as well. You may have mold or fungus problems. Mm -hmm. So why should somebody buy the seeds from you guys here? We guarantee our seed. All right. I mean, it's a, we have the most viable seed there is that I know. And we've searched high and low. We look. We go through about five or six different farms per year on a seasonal basis to get the freshest, most viable seeds there are. You definitely want to have some viable seeds because they're just going to bust out and grow better for you, and you're going to actually grow more food with less headaches. Because if you get seeds that maybe aren't so good, and you have a whole bad batch, you're like, oh, sprouting sucks. It doesn't work. Well, maybe you didn't do it the best way you could by getting the seeds that are grown here. I mean, the seeds they sell you here are the same seeds that have kept them in business for the last six years. So they definitely work well. And we use them every day. So <laughs> you, see the, you see the results. <laughs> yeah, all this stuff looks great. You know, I've tasted this stuff, so delicious. So Sean, if somebody wants to get in contact with you guys, how can they get a hold of you? What's your website and all sure, that good stuff? Sure. You can go to www.gotsprouts.com or you can give us a call at 561-689-9464. All right, Sean. Well, great. Thank you. I've enjoyed my time spent with you, and I'm, thank you for sharing your incredible wealth of knowledge on sprouting. Uh, I've appreciated it, and hopefully my viewers will now start to grow indoors during the winter time, but also all year long to supplement their outdoor gardening. Absolutely. Happy sprouting, everybody. <laughs> all right. So once again, this is John Kohler with GrowInYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time, and remember, keep on sprouting.